All right, what's up, you guys? Hope you are all doing well. I watched a couple documentaries uh, this past weekend, and I thought I'd talk a little bit about them because they were really, really good. They're both about uh, canon films, Golan and Globus, the two cousins uh, from Israel who came over to the U.S. and um, really just kind of put canon films on the map. And... It is, it, it's really interesting. I could have just kept watching both of these documentaries, actually. Uh, but first up, let's talk about Electric Boogaloo. Uh, now this is the, uh, the German Blu-ray release. Now, I decided to pick this one up because the U.S. isn't going to get a Blu-ray release. I don't know why. I don't know the details. Uh, we're going to be getting a, well, there'll be uh, two ways to get it. There's going to be a standalone DVD in September and then there's also going to be at the same time a, uh, a 10 movie box set so one of them will be the documentary and then you get nine films from the Canon catalog including I'll put the picture up here somewhere uh, but it'll, it'll include like over the top and masters of the universe and a lot of the ones that you know we grew up with and and really adore um, and that's the thing like if you didn't grow up in in the 80s particularly uh, then you you may not quite understand like how influential maybe but these were huge movies for us growing up like especially I, uh, there were horror movies in the in the early 80s i know that, that they did um but then if you go along you know you have a lot of the action movies like invasion usa and delta force and um a lot of the Death Wish sequels, I mean, Bloodsport, you could just go on and on because these guys made at one point 40, 50 movies a year, which is kind of unheard of. So the, the documentary, oh, well, let me get back to the box set. So you can get that box set, which I'm probably going to do. Um, as far as this, if you're wondering on the slip cover, this is actually part of the slip cover, so you can't take it off. The inside has the same artwork. There's reversible artwork, but it has the, um, but it has the, uh, the rating on it. So you can see right there. So there's a look at it. Uh, the guy who made this is the same guy who made the Not Quite Hollywood documentary about uh, the Australian exploitation films and stuff from the 70s and 80s. Uh, and he did a fine job. This was really good. It kind of starts with how um, uh, Golan and Globus, you know, they're cousins, but how they kind of, you know, came together in their quest to make movies. Um, excuse me. Golan was more into let's just make the movies. He was more the movie side of it. Globus was the business side of it. And they were successful in Israel. They wanted to come to the U.S., and you know pursue the same dream and they did and it's really their story about how they were kind of wheelers and dealers and really they seemed to kind of shake up the whole Hollywood system because it had been uh, kind of very formulaic for so long like the big studios were the big studios and that's just how it was and but Canon Films and you know these two guys came along and they were like no we're gonna do it this way you get a lot of interviews from actors, actresses, directors, producers, you name it. Um, just talking about their experiences working with Canon films. Some of them good, a lot of them maybe not so good. Um, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it was just really, it, it was just really interesting kind of watching this point in time and in history of, of film, which was kind of so important to me at least and to people in my generation you learn about how really they were the the cause of their own demise of canon films how they just kind of spread themselves too thin financially and how making 30 40 50 films a year sure some of them had financial success but a lot of them didn't and a lot of them didn't do well and i and this here's a movie i talked about um I think the last video is, I've been talking about it a lot lately is uh, Breaking and Breaking to Electric Boogaloo. On the DVD, the three pack DVD, where you have those two films in Beat Street, 
they all had the release date of 1984 and I kind of questioned it. I'm like, wait a minute, there's no way all three of those could have come out in 1984. They did. They had Break and Come Out in the beginning of 84 because they wanted to they wanted to beat Beat Street to the breakdancing movie Punch. So they had there was uh, Break in in early 84 and then Beat Street was released by a different studio. And then at the end of 84, they released the sequel, Electric Boogaloo. I was just kind of blown away by that, uh, especially when they didn't, they didn't plan it that way. So I just couldn't even imagine in this day and age having a movie released in, you know, early in the year and then with no script or anything, having the sequel done by the end of the year. I mean, it can be done, but it's just something that you don't, uh, you know, you don't see anymore. But, you know, by the late 80s, early 90s, things were starting to fall apart and they went their separate ways. And what's hilarious to me is I, I remember these two movies. Each of them wanted, each of them had um, a Lombada script, <laughs> which is so ridiculous. But, you know, they thought Lombada was going to be the next breakdancing thing. And so they both just rushed, rushed, rushed to the punch to, to release a Lombada film and it turns out that they were both released on the same day. So, you know, no no one won there. And then Lombada kind of took off, but not too much. Um, and then for some reason, I never realized that they also did the last Superman movie, Superman 4. Kind of, you know, the not so good one <laughs> at all. Um, and we learn more about that in the next documentary I'm going to, I'm going to talk about. But just real quick, I wanted to run down just some of some some I mean teeny bit of the movies that I remember from Canon Films, and I really appreciated uh, growing up. You know, well not all of them, but most of them. I mean, we had Last American Virgin, which was um, uh, almost they said a shot for shot remake of an earlier film they did in Israel. You have Hercules with Lou Ferrigno. Of course, Breaking and Breaking 2. You've got American Ninja with Michael Dudikoff, Invasion USA. Chuck Norris and Charles Bronson were were real big in their catalog. Life Force. You got Barfly with Mickey Rourke. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, I didn't realize was a canon film. Uh, Over the Top, Superman 4, Masters of the Universe, and Bloodsport. You know, those are just some of the some of the big ones that they that they released. Um, but let's get to, uh, the Go-Go Boys, the inside story of Canon Films. Now, this is kind of the opposite side of the story. So you have this side of the story where you have interviews from other people because Golan and Globus didn't want to be, uh, a part of this documentary. So they went off and made their own documentary, the Go-Go Boys. And that title, it's kind of self-explanatory, but it just refers to how they were movers and shakers in Hollywood. They were just always go, 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 kind of getting deals done and whatnot. Uh, this one is more their side of the story, and it was very interesting. You know, it was a lot of vintage interviews, vintage footage from them you know, growing up, all, it, all through their Hollywood days, you know, uh, making deals and different interviews. And I enjoyed seeing that side of it as well, because maybe, you know, this documentary didn't have uh, clearance to use that footage. So it starts with them early on in Israel. And a lot of the documentary is in Hebrew. Um, and then they use subtitles, obviously. There was a little bit of overlapped footage, not too much. You had a couple new interviews with um, Jean-Claude Van Damme, who I'm not sure why he was wearing these little, little short shorts, but if, if you watch the documentary, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, John Voigt's in there. Michael Dudikoff uh, is in this one as well. So he does interviews for both documentaries. And they, they don't really touch upon, you know, all why they made movies that were so, uh, you know, kind of schlocky and exploitive and, and whatnot. Um, it was more just kind of their passion for, for the projects and stuff. 
but that you know that was okay um but they did talk about how having the mentality of just being all in in the business affected their personal lives um so that was kind of I, I liked how they touched upon that because it would have to honestly if you if you're going 110 percent in anything that you do your personal well unless it's in your personal life but your personal life is going to suffer they did go a little bit deeper as to why their company um you know disbanded why it went down um it's once again they just spread themselves too thin and globus he had said you know before superman 4 came out before they even started because the company was in trouble and they owed millions and millions of dollars to the bank he was like listen we need to kind of regroup and put all, if if not all, most of our money into Superman 4 because this is a this could be a huge thing for us. This could really put us, um, you know, back in the black, and we'll be we'll be good. Like everything's gonna be cool if we can get this film to work. Because that was always their mentality. Like, oh, okay, this one didn't work, but this next movie is really gonna be okay. But Globus was understood how Superman was it could have been huge and it just wasn't you know they didn't put the money into it and and you know instead of shutting down maybe production or not producing and directing 20 other films that year you know and put the money into superman they just didn't uh so that was kind of it it was interesting it was also kind of sad to hear about because they you know he knew but it just didn't happen now, the Go Go Boys documentary runs about 85 minutes. It's a little bit shorter, but, you know, honestly, for what they were going for in their documentary, it, it was kind of the perfect amount. It was the perfect length. I, I think it was fine. Um, Golan, he had gone, he tried to keep, he kept making movies and trying to make movies until he died because Golan passed away last year in 2014. And he was still trying to get movies made uh, up to his death. And, you you know, you got to give the guy credit. I mean, you have a passion for something. That guy followed his passion through his entire life. But, yeah, I absolutely recommend both of the documentaries. I think they're nice companion pieces to each other. Um, if I had to pick one, it would probably be Electric Boogaloo. But... You know, Go Go Boys was was very informative as well, and you saw a lot of footage uh, that you didn't see on this one. So, I recommend checking both of them out. And um, don't forget, late September, that's when we get the U.S. release of, of the documentary, and then also that kind of kick-ass box set. You know, there's not a, a ton... I don't think there's anything exclusive to this DVD, uh, to this Blu-ray. There are some... Um, deleted and extended scenes but I think I read that those are also going to be on the DVD and then you get some um, old canon trailers hope you guys uh, are doing well and I will catch you next time and it'll probably be another week or so because we are going out of town and uh, hopefully we'll get some footage while we are out of town um, going down south for about a week so I will catch you guys next time